Hi folks. Okay, I'm going to try to do a video tutorial on how to use APT. If you go to the doing photometry part of our page, there's a link here that talks about aperture photometry using APT. There's a lot of background information here, sort of a walkthrough. There's also links at the top to where you're going to go to download it and where you can go to get more information. There's a comprehensive introduction here and there's two journal articles that have been submitted that are linked in here. So in order to go get it, go to the um, page here and then because I'm on a Mac I'm gonna if I'm on a laptop it probably makes sense to get the compact size GUI um, for my regular desktop I get the regular size since I'm on the laptop I'm gonna get the compact one I'm gonna save it it's gonna show up in my downloads folder I'm gonna go get it okay and it's gonna unpack it and mount it over here and then I'll just drag and drop it into my applications folder um, Okay, so then we can eject that and then go over to the Applications folder and start it up. Um, what this is going to do is enable you to do photometry. Where did it go? There it is. Okay, come on, talk to me. There we go. Okay, so what we can do is we can load in one of the images for our project. Let's get one of these channel one bcd okay we want to make sure that we get the maic whoops not bcd we want post bcd the maic file because that's the long mosaic the long integration mosaic so it's loaded in the the image over here you can scroll over and see all of the pieces of it um you're, what you're seeing right here is a zoom in on where my cursor is on the screen so that I can examine the shape of a PSF in more detail. Um, I can also look at the nebulosity here and examine how that one's saturated, all that good stuff. So for the first example here, we want something that's relatively bright and relatively isolated. I go find it and click on it. It's going to think and put a bullseye character there. The first thing you want to do is center it. It's going to snap it onto the grid. So if I put my mouse exactly on here, it's going to show me exactly where those circles are. So if I... Oh, there's the thumbnail. Okay, so um, what this is doing is it's actually centering the the aperture on this, on the highest point of that... PSF. That's the first thing we want to do because if I were to do photometry with it, um, the center of the aperture here, I'd get different numbers than if it were here or in the center. So let the computer do the centering. The next thing that we want to do is we want to start investigating all of these parameters. So the centroid radius, that's how much freedom it has in its ability to center. The aperture radius, note that it's in units of pixels. For what we want to do, the IRAC team has determined aperture corrections for native pixel aperture size 3 and annulus size 3 to 7. So um, because these are oversampled pixels, we want to do 6 or uh, 6 to 14. So that's because there's two resampled pixels for each one native pixel. So instead of 3, 3 to 7, it's 6, 6 to 14. Okay? So then note that recompute photometry has turned red. That means that we have to actually go and recalculate. Now we can investigate what's going on here. We can go investigate um, uh, a slice through the aperture. So over here in the you have a pink line and a blue line. And then on this plot, we have a pink line and a blue line. So what this is showing us is this is the aperture. That's the sky annulus there. And those are, that's a cross-section in both directions. So it's a little bit asymmetric. You can see that in the image by eye. They're little triangles. That's just the shape of the Iraq PSF. You can look at how much scatter there is within the, sky, the, within the, the source annulus. You could look at how much scatter there is in the sky annulus. Um, you can get a histogram of the stuff that's in the sky. You can also get a curve of growth. That's pretty important. What this is showing you is how much cumulative surface brightness there is enclosed in the aperture and the sky. Now look, the more, the bigger the aperture is, the flux just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Where do I stop? Where do I draw the line? If I do a radial profile, that's showing me where the source flux is dying away and the sky is really taking over. You can see that six um, resampled pixels out is a pretty good uh, radius size to use for most sources. But there's a really important thing that we haven't done. If we go to more settings, 
that by default it comes up with no aperture interpolation, that's fine, but it also comes up with no sky background subtraction. We want to tell it sky median subtraction. Apply settings, close the window. Note that recompute photometry is red again. Tell it, okay, now let's go back and look at the curve of growth. See? Now the flux is going up until we hit the aperture, the end of the aperture and the beginning of the sky annulus, and now the sky levels off. So what this is telling us is we're getting almost all the flux from the object, okay? And then the sky, sub, the sky level is set out here. So we can now go back and look again at the sky scatter. There's a reasonable amount of sky. It's not too bad. Um, look at the histogram of sky values. Look at the radial profile. And satisfy ourselves that what we've done well, the, the values that we've picked for this aperture and annulus combination is the right number, the right thing to use. Now, over here it's telling us some real-term results from where we put the cursor. This is the recentered um, uh, location of the object, but now we're starting to get into some more interesting things down here. So it's it, it knows that the units of the images are Megajansky's perstoradian. We have to be a little bit careful about units in doing this because the units are really important. There's a whole page just on units and there's a thing here that says cookbook for image conversion or calculating the number APT needs. That's what we need to go to. What I would do too is I would start an Excel spreadsheet so that you can start doing calculations. So step zero, what do you have and what do you need? We have an image in Megajansky's first irradian. You have, we, we can calculate the number of degrees per pixel. We need to convert this image to Megajansky's. In other words, get rid of that per irradians. This is also the number that APT needs to do the conversion to Megajansky's. So the things that make this hard is that the pixel size in the mosaic can be variable. I can generate mosaics with pixel sizes any size I want so I can't just give you one number that's going to work for all mosaics every time even if you just work with the pipeline mosaics the IREC and MIPS mosaics are not going to have the same pixel size also the pixels in this unit are kind of a funny hidden unit and the accounting of it is a little bit strange so for the IRAC one mosaic, it has an example here from July 2006, but this is more recent than that. If we go over here, we can actually go see the FITS header. What it's telling us to look for is C-delt. So we can copy in C-delt and go find it, and it tells us here. C-delt 1 is point 0 0.000167 degrees per pixel and 0 0.000167 degrees per pixel for the other uh, dimension. So if we go over here and put in IRAC, Whoops, Iraq 1, C delt 1, C delt 2, and then put in 0 0.000167 in both of these locations. Um, this is in degrees per pixel. Okay, so now we can close the header and go back to the instructions here. Find out what the size of the pixels are in square degrees per pixel. So back over to the spreadsheet. These are degrees per pixel. We want to find out the square degrees per pixel. So we want to do this number times this number. That's the number of square degrees per pixel. So let's go back over to the instructions over here. Find out what the conversion is between square degrees and steradian. That's going to be the same no matter what uh, image we're looking at. There's 60 arc minutes in a degree, in a degree, 60 arc seconds in an arc minute, so there's 3,600 arc seconds in a degree. We've got to square it. It's that many square arc seconds per degree, and one square arc second is 2.3504 times 10 to the minus 11 steradians. So the conversion between steradians and square degrees is right here. So to find out what the size of the pixels are in steradians, we have to multiply the number of square degrees per pixel that we calculated by this number. So let's see, calculate out the number of square radians per pixel. So if we do the square degrees per pixel times 0 0.00030487, that's the number of square radians per pixel. Now, Step five would be convert the units of the image. So either we or APT needs to multiply the whole image by this number. Now look, this number that was in the example is 3.5 times 10 to the 11. The example that was given was using a 0 .000339 degrees per pixel image. If we go over here, this the size of the pixels are similar. The magnitude of the number we're getting is similar. So this is a good sign. Now over here, 
it says, it points out that this is the number that APT needs, but look at the units. The units of the image and the photometry you get out are going to be in mega jansky's, and none of our sources are going to get are going to be that bright. So we want to get it in Janskys. So this is the conversion to mega Janskys that we would put if we wanted that unit, that number in APT. Um, maybe we want to do conversion to just plain Janskys. Okay, so what we want is this times 1 times 10 to the 6th. So that's the number we would use to get a conversion to Janskys. But most of the fluxes that MOPEX gives or IDL gives are in microjanskys, which is another factor of 10 to the 6. So conversion to microjanskys is going to be that number times another 10 to the 6th. Okay, so this then is the number that APT needs if we want the numbers to come out in microjanskys. So if we copy this number, go back over here, go to more settings, and come over here. This, we want to perform new image data conversion. The image data conversion factor that we just calculated is that, and the number that we're going to get out is microchanskys. Apply the settings, close the window, recompute photometry. So the, num the amount of microchanskys that it's calculating for the guy that we care about right there is 1.147 times 10 to the minus 3. So what we want to do is we can either explicitly say save results and it'll save it to a file or we can go back over here to our spreadsheet and label this tab as apt image conversion number add a new tab and put in our photometry okay and then make a column for object x y r a deck iraq one flux density. Okay, so we can copy in that the object 1 is the first number we're doing. Uh, the x is 1088, the y is 603, um, the right ascension declination we're going to have to go get, and the Iraq 1 flux density is going to be 1.147 times 10 to the 3 microchanskys. Let's go over here and check on the right ascension and declination. If we put the mouse right there, the right ascension is getting us 21, 33, 24. So 21, 33, uh, 24. Oops, I didn't do that right. 21, 33, 24. And then over here, whoops, that's no good. Come back, come back. Snap the center again. Okay, so now it's coming up um, 21, 33, 24, 0.6. Come on. And then declination is plus 58, 0.6, 23.1. So there we go. That's the first one. So now we got to go find that same little guy at the other bands and measure him. We also, if we were really good at this, we'd want to write down the uncertainty. So the uncertainty that it gives us is 5.451 times 10 to the 1. So this is the Iraq 1 flux error. Okay, so then you got to do this again for all of the rest of the bands and um, all the rest of the objects that you care about. Um, there is a batch uh, source list option. You can put in a, a whole list of, um, of, uh, of image pixel coordinates or right ascension and declination. And when you get good at this, after you satisfy yourself that you understand exactly what's going on, this is what you're going to want to do because it's so much less labor intensive than doing it by hand. But you do have to make sure that your, um, that your settings are correct because if you don't, you can really shoot yourself in the foot really effectively.